It is the morning of day four of the Syrian refugee ration challenge. Uh, so I struggled a bit last night. Um, at about 7.30, 8pm, I was starving. Um, I ended up getting an early night. Um, and But I managed to sleep in this morning. It's 9am, Sunday morning, day four. And I don't feel hungry, I feel good. Okay, so I just have a bit of an amendment to make because I was reading the, the, the toolkit that came, um, that Act for Peace uh, sent regarding the ration challenge. And I misinterpreted um, the, the tea bags um, and how to, how to earn those. I thought it was for each five people that you reach, like that, that donate, because obviously you're reaching them if they, they donate, but that's not the case. It's for each person you personally uh, ask to donate to you either um, in person or via email or via like a private message in, in WhatsApp or, or through um, Messenger. Um, so yes, yeah, so I only have six donations that fit that criteria, which is the equivalent of one tea bag. So I am lucky that I didn't throw it out and I, and I kept using the same one yesterday for, for three days in a row. Um, and so yeah, so I still have now the same tea bag, which I kept in, um, in the fridge, um, in a bowl. So yeah, so this is day four now of using the same tea bag. Um, but I made a very good choice of tea because um, it's still quite strong even after four days. So I don't know how it'll be day seven, but it's still acceptable for now. Okay, so it is mid-morning on uh, day four of the Syrian refugee ration challenge. And I'm gonna have like a, a brunch, I think, today. And so I'm gonna attempt to make vegan bacon from the, the starch that you can see settled at the bottom um, of this container from when I uh, made the seitan uh, yesterday. So the first step is to pour off the water um, just to retain the starch and to leave maybe about 10 to 15 percent of the water on top. Okay so now we just have our our starch with a little bit of water and so we basically now just want to mix this until um, it makes like a thin batter. Okay so we're now going to separate our mix. It's, it is quite a bit thin. I thought it was going to be a bit thicker so I may have should have tipped out a little bit more water but basically we're going to separate it into two bowls. So in the smaller bowl, we're going to tip maybe a third of it in. So this, this bowl is going to represent the fat of the bacon. And then this bowl will represent the, um, the meat of the bacon. Okay, so we have our, our two bowls. So this first bowl that represents the fat, normally you would add things like um, a bit of salt, onion powder, um, garlic powder for flavor, but I'm not able to do that, so my fat is just going to be flavorless. Um, and in the uh, this bowl that's meant to represent the, the meat portion of the bacon, you would add things like, um, you'd also add garlic, onion powder, but as well as like some soy sauce, maple syrup, um, paprika to give it the, the color, uh, as well as uh, beetroot powder. Um, uh, yeah, and actually, yeah, Vegemite, I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, also, yeah, just to, um, and a little bit of yeast. So unfortunately, I cannot do that. But I am going to add to my meat uh, bowl some of my spice to try and give it a little bit of colour. Not too much, because otherwise it'll be way too salty. Okay, and so then once I mix it in, I'm going to cook it in the wok. And here we have our our fat and our bacon mix. So basically, we just want to add it to sort of form a pancake. So we just want to do strips of the, the different colors, the fat and the meat, um, with a thinner amount of the fat than the meat. So I might actually start with the meat, might be easier. So it's very thin. I was, I was expecting it to be a lot thicker. So I'm just going to very slowly do this because I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. Okay. And the starch settles very quickly, so I've got to make sure I keep it stirred. Okay. 
this is going to represent the fat. Okay, so we just let this cook. We don't turn it. Um, and then we just sort of lift it up like a pancake and put it onto a plate, let it cool, and then use like a pizza cutter or like a knife or something, or even just tear it to make it look a bit more like bacon. Um, okay, so I think that is done. You don't need to cook it for very long. So I'm going to slide this now out onto a plate and try not to, um, to break it. And then I'm going to cut it into strips. And then once it's into strips, you can then fry it in a little bit more oil. Okay, so this is what it looks like when I take it out of the, uh, the wok and put it onto a plate and sort of cut it into strips. Um, I had a bit of difficulty trying to get it out of the wok, so I had to cut it into strips in the wok and transfer it to a plate. And when you let it cool a little bit, it's much easier to handle. Okay, so here we have it, our bacon made from starch. So obviously it's not the correct color because you know I couldn't add most of the well, all of the additives, but uh, yeah I mean it looks okay. So I have my piece of flatbread from yesterday, and I'm just going to make myself a uh, a bacon sandwich. So I've warmed this up. So it's all right. So I have bacon. I mean it doesn't look too bad, you know. You could see if that meat was darker and it was fried for a bit longer. I could have fried it a bit longer, but I was worried it would fall apart too much. So yeah, you can see how that would resemble bacon if, it, if this part was a bit darker. So I'm going to put all of this onto my sandwich. And here we go. So it's, uh, yeah, so it's 11 a.m. So this is my uh, brunch, I guess. So let's see how it is. It's surprisingly good. Hmm, that's actually really good because it's a completely different texture. Hmm. Okay, so as it's day four today, I'm uh, at the midway through my ration challenge. I thought I would just do a bit of a stock take of the rations I have left so I can kind of plan the meals for the next uh, few days of the challenge. So I still have plenty of my vegetable oil ration left. I don't think I'm going to use all that. And still, of course, I have unlimited salt and my spice. I only have about 100 grams left of flour. So it's enough to make a couple of more flatbreads for lunch. Um, yeah, that's it. So um, let's take a look what's in the box. So yeah, I still have a lot of rice. Um, so I still have the, uh, the 420 grams uh, that were sent in the, um, the ration box. I have two 300 gram portions here, as well as two 100 gram portions. So yeah, quite quite a lot of rice. Um, I was hoping to make some rice flour out of the rice, um, but uh, I think given the current climate uh, here in Australia, that's not going to be possible because you have to partially cook it and then sort of lay it flat to dry outside. But you know, it's um, it's flooding here in Australia at the moment, like it's torrential rain at the moment. It's not going to be possible to dry it by that process. Um, I did try to just put a little bit straight in my mortar and pestle to grind it into flour, but that was a fail, so that, that did not work. Um, yeah, so I don't know if putting it in like a food processor might grind it up fine enough to become flour with just like not being cooked at all. I don't know, maybe I could try that. Um, but yeah, so... I think the last couple of days are just going to be rice, sadly. Uh, so I still have my full can of um, kidney beans in brine. So I'm probably tonight going to make um, like a kidney bean soup or something to have with, with rice. Um, I also have um, half of my lentils left. So I can still make um, another two servings of lentil soup still have uh, about 40 grams of um, the dried chickpeas so I can make some more more hummus and if I don't have bread to have this with um, I can I just have it with rice I guess um, on the side and sort of mix it a little bit with the rice to give it a bit more flavor and a bit less boring um, oh. <laughs> yeah and I still have my entire can of sardines so I don't particularly care for sardines I wish I could swap this out for a can of mackerel because John West do an amazing mackerel in um, in brine, but yeah, unfortunately, you know, refugees can't just swap out the rations I don't like, so I'm stuck with sardines and oil. 
Uh, um, so I don't think I could abide eating these out of the tin. Like, I mean, I have tried sardines before. Um, the last time I ate sardines was when Aaron and I were cycling down South America. And I think we're in Bolivia. Um, a lot of the towns on the map uh, just did not exist. And so this was before we had like mobile phones and, um, you know, we'd go to internet cafes once every few weeks to let our, our people know we were still alive. But, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so the, the towns didn't exist. Uh, we were cycling through the desert. We were very low on water. We had no food. Um, and then it started torrentially raining and it's, it was freezing, absolutely freezing. And so we're trying to set up the tent and our, you know, our fingers are frozen. We're, we're just, we're, we're suffering because we, we haven't had much food and it's so cold and you know, bodies are starting to shut down. So we managed to get in the tent out of the rain and into a bit of warmth. And we had literally some sardines, a couple of crackers and a little tube of mustard. And so our dinner was literally a cracker with a little bit of mustard and a sardine on top. And so I haven't, I haven't eaten sardines since then. I hoped that I never would have to again. So I don't know about you, Aaron, whether you've eaten sardines again after that experience, but, uh, but yeah, so I don't, yeah, I think I'm going to make some kind of like, um, fish cake out of these, maybe mix the sardines with some, some cooked rice, a bit of flour and make sort of like a patty that I can fry. Um, yeah, or maybe just, I mean, I could have it on bread, but I don't think I'm going to have any bread. So I think then maybe just sardines mixed with rice. So yeah, I'm not, not looking forward to that. I think I'll leave this to, um, to maybe Monday or Tuesday. So yeah, so these are my, my rations that I have left day four. Okay, so it is Sunday afternoon and I decided I might attempt to make a snack. Um, so I'm gonna try and make rice crackers using uh, rice that I've previously cooked. So basically you just add that to the blender with a bit of, um, of my spice and oil and just blend it until I um, get something that resembles like dough. Uh, I may have to add a small amount of water um, depending on sort of how it goes. And then basically you just um, roll them out as thin as possible if you want them nice and crispy, just into, um, or roll, the, roll, the, roll them out and then sort of cut them to shape um, for the size you want. And then you're meant to bake them in the oven for like um, 20 minutes. But unfortunately there was a power outage on uh, Thursday night on day one of my ration challenge. And I only just realized now my oven does not work. So I may have blown a fuse or something, but um, yeah, I'll have to worry about that later. So I'm going to see if I can make these in the air fryer. Um, I don't know how that's going to go if, or if it's possible, but um, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to use a small amount of rice and just test out um, one run of rice crackers in the air fryer. So let's see how this goes. So the first blend, you can see I need a tiny bit of water to add to this. All right, so this is how it looks. I'm not sure if, um, I mean, I think it might meant to be a bit thicker, but I don't know, you can't really roll these out. Let's try just like flattening it out this way. Okay. So um, right now, I don't know if this is in the, in the camera shot. I'm just, um, I just put another piece of baking paper on top to be able to roll it because otherwise I don't think I would, would be able to roll it because it's um, just because of the uh, consistency of it. So, okay, so we have a nice thin sort of cracker here. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to put this in the air fryer. Okay, let's just try one in the air fryer. I might just um, cut this piece of paper, uh, baking paper. And maybe just put this entire thing uh, in the air fryer and then see what see what happens, I guess. Have a look at what they... Oh, no. Okay. All right, so the paper almost caught on fire. <laughs> kind of crispy. They would have been really good if... Um, yeah, obviously I can't put them straight onto the uh, into the bottom of the air fryer because they're too the dough's too mushy. But uh, hmm. Okay, let me rethink this. Okay, so attempt number two. I'm going to attempt to put a rice cracker into this um, pie container, then put that in the air fryer. So just gonna turn that over that way. So let's try that again. Okay, so. Last resort, I've like squashed it into the bottom of this pie tray. Um, 
Well, let's see how this goes in the air fryer. I can't imagine it's going to go very well. I think it's going to be a fail. Okay, so, so this is stopped. I'm really reluctant to open this. I don't know what I'm going to find. Mm, oh, okay. Well, this looks a little better. At least it's in one piece. It's blown up quite a lot. So I had it only in for five minutes at 200 degrees. So. Okay, it's like more like a, I might just do the other side really quickly. Okay, so after being in the air fryer for five minutes on each side, this is what I am left with. So, I don't know, it's kind of like a rice cake more than a rice cracker. Obviously it was a little too thick when I, I placed it in the container, but I don't know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, let's just see what it's like. Probably need to be cooked a little longer. You can see it's just like a, a crunchy little rice cake. It's actually not bad. Hmm. <laughs> actually turned out okay in the end. Okay, and so for dinner tonight, I'm actually going to attempt to make um, fasulia. You can see the recipe here, which is essentially just a kidney bean uh, soup. Okay, so according to the recipe, we need three quarters of this can of kidney beans and then half of the, um, the liquid. However, I'm only going to use half a can because I want to save the other half a can for later on in the week. So, um, roughly, I guess 200 grams. So, uh, actually, okay, so we'll keep about half a can. And so... Basically this, I'm just going to add to the saucepan and uh, just simmer until I make, and then I'll have to add water as I go along. Um, but I think the recipe, no, it doesn't call for water. Just a tablespoon of oil. So I'm going to add the oil and then just uh, sim simmer this on the stove. So it is dinner on night four of the Syrian refugee ration challenge. So here I have my fasulia that I made, which was essentially just like a kidney bean soup. So I have to say it doesn't smell amazing, um, but hopefully it tastes better than it looks. So let's give it a taste. Okay. Actually, it tastes okay. It's not so bad. Um, so basically, I'm just going to sort of tip this onto the rice and sort of eat it like that. I don't have any flatbread to have for dinner tonight because I just simply don't have enough um, wheat flour. So it's just going to be my rice and fasulia. But I would prefer to eat uh, the kidney beans in fasulia form rather than just like mix the kidney beans into the rice. I'd much prefer to have like a soup to eat with the rice. So uh, yeah, and of course my glass of water. So I'm going to go and enjoy this meal. Okay, so it is the evening of day four. So um, from tomorrow, I'm on my downhill run, three days left of the challenge. So I thought I'd do a bit of an update to how I've been going. Um, and to be honest, I've been fine. I've been fine with the, the food that I've been eating these last uh, four days because I feel as if the meals I've made have had quite a lot of variety and um, not just variety, but um, in terms of like textures and flavors. And so, yeah, it's actually, I've actually been enjoying the food I've been making and trying to get creative with the with the rations and, and make meals that are, yeah, do have a bit of variety. Um, so yeah, so the food I've been eating, it's been fine. Um, I do miss uh, having drinks other than water. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I mean, yesterday I was a bit tired, but I don't know if that's got to do with the rations or just some other factor, but, um, Today I wasn't hungry at all. Like after lunch, I was. I haven't been hungry all day. Like I had dinner, um, but I wasn't hungry. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. But yeah. So uh, yeah. So so far it's been okay. So we'll see what uh, day five is like tomorrow. So uh, okay. Signing off. <laughs>